This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Uh, we are called on a glycol unit not working. Now this is a beer chiller unit. Circulates glycol for a long draw draft system to keep the beer lines cold from point A to point B. Point A being the beer walk-in, all the way to the taps in the bar. So, customer states that they just had another service technician from the beverage company out here to change a pump that it looks like he just left in the attic because he didn't care. Look at people. And uh, that suction line is covered in mold. Interesting. It's not frozen because you can see the pipe right there. <laughs> what the heck? And he left a bunch of rock stars and crap up here. What people are idiots like this? I don't understand people that don't clean up after themselves. But he said that uh, it had a bad pump and he changed the pump, but the unit still wasn't cooling and it was all frozen up. And they said, they told the manager that if uh, the pump didn't fix the problem that they needed to call the refrigeration guys because it's probably a bad compressor. Well, I don't know, none of that really makes sense to me. I get up here, the pump is not running. System's at 27 degrees. What the heck is going on here? So, fun stuff, I'm gonna climb up here. But I look at the switches, looks like the pump is off. What is going on here? What are we doing? Come over here. The pump was off, first and foremost. Doesn't look like the condensing unit switch works. That's odd. Or maybe it does, maybe it just interrupts the control power. But yeah, this guy, there, that does work. So, I almost wonder if the technician just simply shut off the wrong thing. So, the way that these work is, there's a glycol bath up in here with a heat exchanger in it, and the pump circulates fluid across that. This thing was running the compressor without running the pump, and you can't do that. So it basically is just gonna freeze up and honestly, you can actually rupture the heat exchanger. I've seen, or I haven't seen it, but I've heard about it. So that's something you need to be careful about. So I'm worried, why did he leave the pump off and the compressor on? I have a feeling he flipped the wrong dip switches. So uh, compressor's off, you can see it's calling for cooling, but I have it shut off at the switch now and I turn the pump on. So we need to circulate that warm glycol over that heat exchanger and hopefully melt any of the ice that's causing the whole freeze up inside of here and hope that there wasn't a uh, heat exchanger rupture. Get up in here and temp control says 27 and it's not rising. And I've had the compressor off for like 10 minutes. That should be rising. I pull the reservoir off and it doesn't look frozen up. Stick my finger in there, that is not 27 degrees. It's more like 60 degrees. So we're gonna put a thermometer up in here and see what the thermometer says the temperature of the glycol is. Yeah, it is just sitting at 54 degrees. So I don't think it's iced up. I also, to me, that glycol level looks low. I think it's supposed to be like two inches within the heat exchanger, but I don't know, maybe not. Well, actually, no, no, that's probably right because that's the overflow. Yeah, it's a little bit low, but I wouldn't say bad. Um, not enough to have to really do anything. I think we have a bad temperature sensor for this guy right here. Uh, it goes into like a little, it's super tight in this attic. It's hard for you guys to see, but right up in here is a silver rod and there's a sensor that's put into that. So the sensor's in that little rod and it's definitely not 27 degrees. So you've got this little, I can't remember if this is gonna leak glycol or not. I unplugged the unit, oh no. Oh yeah, no, it will leak glycol. Yeah, there's a ferrule on there. And I don't have that sensor, so no, that's not gonna happen. We need to order that. So there's a ferrule and it locks it onto that sensor. And we are not gonna have that guy. So what I'm gonna do is we will just run the sensor and dip it into the glycol for now until we can order the proper part. So I need to run out to my van and get a, uh, a Dixel sensor, which I have. By the way, this unit needs to be replaced. It's horrendous. This whole thing is just trashed. Old school thing too. I'm surprised this thing's still in operation. But um, yeah, so that sensor has a ferrule on the little rod that was sticking through to kind of keep it from sealing, or keep it from leaking. So um, 
we're not gonna be able to work with that. But I'll just hook a new sensor up and run it and over and dip it into the glycol for now. I carry these sensors in my truck, so. All we gotta do is just unplug this one, plug it in, we'll droop it over the top temporarily. It'll be fine until we get back with the right sensor that you know runs through that housing. This is a tight space and that piece right there in my head do not mix. <laughs> Whacked it hard. Luckily I just got a tetanus shot because I hit my head in another attic and got a nail through it. Alright, well, I've got this. I'm going to put the screws back in. I've got the sensor ran over and uh, we'll plug it back in here in just a sec. Alright, this may not... It may be the control that's bad because it's back and running. Let's see if that temp goes up. It may need to change the control itself. It's better than it was, but still, that's it should be much higher than 37 degrees right now because it's 55 in that glycol reservoir. All right, yeah, I think there's something going on with the control causing the problem. I keep a universal Dixel controller in my van, so basically just plug and play. I'll just pull the old one out, put the new one in plug it in let's hope that fixes the problem right. it's set it up as TC2 let's go ahead and set our set point so it has an auto setup mode when you uh... okay so we're on so now we're reading 40 degrees a little more accurate pump motors on Compressors on. We're gonna let it run for a few minutes, let it drop down in temp, and see what it does. There we go. It's climbing in temp like it's supposed to because it's circulating the glycol and the temp's high. So, all right, we're gonna give it some time to come down to temp. It's gonna be a while. So, I'm gonna watch it for a little bit, and then as long as I see a satisfying come down to temp or get close, I'll button the unit up and I'll start cleaning up all the other people's trash from up in here. So, when I initially put the sensor on there, this is what I should have seen was once I turned the pump on, we should have seen it run up to like 52 degrees. So that's what indicated to me that there was a problem within the control itself also. So, but yeah, now I've got good um, feelings about this. And you know, like I said, we're just watching them down to temp. All right, it is struggling to come down to temp and it's been about 45 minutes, half an hour. So we are gonna go ahead and gauge up. Now, it's getting cold. We've got a cool suction line, but I wouldn't doubt that we're a little low in refrigerant that uh, rotor lock or that flare fitting on that compressor is all rusted out. I wouldn't be surprised if that's leaking. That's not leaking. Um, this thing's just in pretty bad shape. The automatic expansion valve that was in here was all rotted out too. So this, I'm going to tell the customer they need to replace this unit, but I'm going to uh, go get some uh, probes and or service gauges and gauge up on this guy real quick. All right, it's not horrible. This is an older unit too. Um, we're at 44, it's about 71 degrees up here. As far as pressures, I've probed up to with minimal loss and I purged, basically put that on and purged it as I was hooking it up to the tank so that way we know we don't have any air in the system. Um, this is 134A, so I would expect about 25 to 30 degrees over ambient on a unit like this without weighing in the charge total charge on this is only nine ounces so uh, if it is low it's it's just slightly low because we're at about 90 degrees 88 over ambient as far as condensing saturation temp so we'll just add a little bit of refrigerant see what it does for us it won't take much because again total charge is nine ounces on this guy right so every time you take off your gauges even with probes you're gonna have a little blowback and a little loss so yeah, it's expected that this thing would be just slightly low because if someone took their gauges off, you know, it happens. These are older units too, so we'll just watch it for a little bit, just little bits at a time. Now, you know, people might ask, like, how do I know that I need to charge to 30 degrees over ambient? You know, it's more or less, um, that's a rule of thumb, and you don't just use that. But because this is an older piece of junk system, we're not going to put a crap ton of effort into this. Um, again, I'm going to tell them to replace it. So I'm not going to get a scale and weigh the charge in because we'd have to vacuum it down and everything and we don't need to go that crazy. This thing just needs a little bit of gas. Um, I'm already noticing it performing a little bit better. Uh, it's going to take time. They're going to have to start running their beer, uh, meaning they need to clear the warm beer out of the lines. Um, but we're looking a lot better as far as our saturation temps. Um, 
getting a lot closer. So we're at right at about 100, so we're just under 30 degrees over ambient. Uh, low side pressure, I don't see a problem with that. About a 20 degree evaporator right now. That seems pretty good, no issues there. So at this point, I probably put two, three ounces of gas in it. I think that's plenty and uh, we'll take the probes off and then uh, just go down and have them start running some beer through the lines. So all they gotta do is clear all the warm beer out of the lines and this temperature will drop significantly. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up some of this stuff and organize this attic, clean up everybody's trash. Check this out. I'm like, what is this? It's a fish tape, like a retractable fish tape. Someone left up here. It's kinda cool, I'll throw that in my van. And then there's a bunch of conduit and crap. I'm not cleaning that up. But. All right, I cleaned it up a little bit, some of the trash. Glycol unit's at 40. Like I said, it'll take a little while for it to get down to the 28 degree set point. Seems like my office just keeps getting dirtier and dirtier. There's more clutter going around. I've got too, mu too many compressors stacked up that are taken apart in the background. This is turning into Dexter's laboratory over here. So... Uh, glycol unit, right? Uh, beverage chiller unit. Uh, it's very common that there's like a gray area with these units where the beverage company doesn't do any refrigerant repairs, refrigeration repairs, but then they will change pumps. They will service the glycol, change the glycol lines. I personally will not. I don't mind changing glycol every once in a while, but I usually don't stock it. It's cheaper for the beverage company to do it, but I won't run the glycol lines i don't deal with any of that stuff so there is kind of a an overlap and they do have to be involved but when it's getting harder and harder to find employees right typically on the beverage side it's even harder for them to find employees and they're running into serious problems uh the beverage companies i mean they don't pay a lot of money at least for most technicians. I'm sure there's some technicians out there that are amazing beverage technicians and they can probably name their price. Um, just like in air conditioning and refrigeration, electricians, plumbers, there could be bad techs in all the different trades. I'm not saying that the technician that was on site on this one was a bad tech. Maybe he wasn't, you know, as, as clean as I'd like him to be. Uh, maybe he made a mistake and simply just turned off the wrong switch when he was leaving. Regardless, I was going to have to come out to fix it anyways because he doesn't deal with any of the electrical, the controllers, or anything like that. It is frustrating, though, when you get up there and it's like, yeah, he changed a pump. And you're like, well, there's the pump. Like, pick up your trash, people. I mean, that's common sense stuff. Regardless, I got up in there. Those units are always in weird precarious locations, but I got up in there. I was able to diagnose it. I thought it was going to be just a sensor. So I tried changing the sensor that didn't fix the problem. I wasn't happy with the results, went ahead and changed the whole controller and all was well. Now I did bring to the customer's attention that I did a temporary install on the sensor and I recommended, Hey, you guys really need to consider replacing this unit. Personally, they don't buy those units from me. I shouldn't say personally, but they don't buy those units from me. They buy them from the beverage company. So that's between them and the beverage company. They did tell me, though, they don't want me to worry about changing the other sensor. They just want to leave what's there. Who knows? I'll go back two years from now and it'll still be that same sensor. So, hey, if it works, it works, right? All I can do is give the customer the information, give them my best diagnosis and let them make the decisions on what they want to do. So I really appreciate you making it to the end of the video. Thank you so very much constantly for coming back and watching these. Leave me some feedback down in the YouTube comments. Tell me what you think. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. Um, you can also uh, help to support the channel if you're interested in doing so by going to my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have merchandise available. We have uh, hats available on the website. This is the most common hat. This is the black uh, underbill flex fit hat. It's like a see-through material. One of these days I'll make a video where you can actually see the light through it, but this one's kind of dirty because it's kind of my everyday wear. Um, but there's other hats available, dad hats, trucker, ha or not trucker hats. There's dad hats and there's uh, flat bill hats. There you go. We also have beanies. We have cuffed beanies, non-cuffed beanies. Those are super popular right now. Zip up hoodies, all available on the website, hvacrvideos.com. So check it out. Also, uh, if you're interested in other ways of supporting the channel, there's Patreon, PayPal, YouTube channel memberships. Those are all like monthly commitments that you make. You can also support the channel via truetechtools.com. If you go to truetechtools.com, 
and you like something on their page, use my offer code, big picture, one word. At the end, when you're checking out, there's a spot for it. Put my offer code in, and on majority of the items on their website, you get an 8% discount. There's a few things it doesn't apply to, but when you do use that discount code, I get a small commission from that. So that's a great way to help support the channel too, okay? Last but not least, just watch the videos. That really is the easiest way to support this channel is just watch the videos from beginning to end. Super simple. Again, thank you so very much. I really do appreciate all your support. I will uh, catch you on the next one.